Lots of people are talking about the sugar diet right now and there's so many reasons why I think it's very, very unhealthy for you. I'm gonna focus on just one of those things to show you just how destructive it can be to your cells. It can literally bring your cells closer and closer towards dying. If you concentrate on just one aspect of it, there are many aspects, but this for me is one of the most important. And I'm gonna use this to demonstrate or to back up my opinion that you should never be doing the sugar diet. Now, if you're doing the sugar diet, you are gonna have a lot more fruit, a lot more candy, processed food, things like that. And so your exposure to fructose, be it naturally occurring in the fruit or in high fructose corn syrup and the artificial foods, is gonna be much, much higher. And just looking at what happens to your body with this compound should ring alarm bells and raise many, many red flags as to why this is never a good idea, the sugar diet. So I'm going to go through what happens when we get exposed to fructose. And this is a metabolic process or a set of metabolic pathways called fructolysis. Um, fructo, fructose lysis, another way of saying broken down or destroyed, so fructolysis. Now, fructose uh, in the, adip, in the uh, hepatocytes, the liver cells, it gets sent straight there. And it gets broken down really with three key steps, which I'm going to go through and show you now and explain why it's so destructive to our physiology, or especially to our liver, right? So the first step, once the uh, fructose reaches the liver, is fructose turns into fructose 1-phosphate. And you should see this on screen now. And this is done using an enzyme called fructokinase. And fructokinase, it comes in and, and basically adds a phosphate onto fructose. Hence why it goes from fructose to fructose 1-phosphate. And therein lies one of, straight away, one of the key problems with this diet, a diet which exposes you to so much more fructose. That phosphate is extremely crucial. And once you see the other steps, then it's gonna make complete sense. Step two is where we take that fructose 1-phosphate and we make two things. We make DHAP and we make glyceraldehyde. And this entire process, uh, this one starter product to two, sorry, one starter molecule to two product molecules, that's done using an enzyme called aldolase. And you should see that come up on screen now. That's step two. The final step, step three, which should come up now, that's where we take the glyceraldehyde from the previous step and we turn it into G3P, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And there's the key. It's another stage where we've taken a molecule and we've added a phosphate onto it. And this entire process is done using something called triose kinase. So what then? What about what, what is it about all these three steps that are such an issue? Well, you have to understand that phosphate is crucial. It's key. And we get that phosphate from a very particular place. So that phosphate comes from ATP. I'm sure many of you have heard of this. If you have an ATP adenosine triphosphate, it's like the currency that we have in our pocket and we spend it when we want a process to occur within the cell. So we take ATP and we essentially break it down. We take one of the phosphates off it. So now instead of adenosine triphosphate, it's adenosine diphosphate, ATP to ADP. We break that phosphate off and now we have to use it for this fructose over here, for fructolysis, which means the ATP concentration dips in hepatocytes. That's never a good thing. Just think about that. That's the currency which allows a cell to do its job, to function properly. But because you've, you've put an, an amount of fructose in there, which is greater than zero, you're now immediately dipping the ATP concentrations. And so that alone, that, that's a massive alarm bell, right? And the thing is, this first step, especially fructose to fructose one phosphate, step one, that's unregulated. Okay, now if you don't know what that means, it means there's no kind of break. Like it, it, if, if there's more fructose coming in, more ATP is broken down to deal with it. Like there's no limit. Ask yourself why that is. You know, why have we evolved over millions of years to have that step unregulated? Well, I, I believe, and this is an opinion now, not a fact, but I believe that we have evolved for that to be unregulated because it allows the body to minimize the damage from the fructose. Now, it 
it actually does minimize damage because once it's phosphorylated, which is the process, it's now not the same molecule anymore. And its ability to glycate, which is why it's so toxic and damaging, in fact, it's multiple times more glycating than glucose, is now diminished as a result. So we're basically tagging it with phosphate to stop it doing what it wants to do. Imagine someone's in a restaurant and they're shouting and shouting and shouting and they're disturbing everyone and everyone hates it. Then someone comes along and tags them with a piece of uh, duct tape over their mouth so they can't shout anymore. That's essentially what's happened here. The hepatocytes are trying to quieten down this molecule because everyone else is trying to eat their meal. Sorry if the analogy is a bit patronizing, but hopefully it makes sense. And so because it's unregulated, it just keeps on using up ATP, keeps on using it up. And the third step, which is where we're taking the glyceraldehyde to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, again, it uses up ATP. So two of the three steps are used, uh, sorry, are carried out to absolutely, in an unregulated way, break down the ATP and reduce the ATP concentration in the cell, which is what we need for the cell to work not for any particular function within the cell, for all functions in the cell, we need that ATP for things to work. Once we have that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, that then enters the glycolysis process and, it, and it's used in that way. But just think about what you're doing. You, you are literally taking away from the cell the thing it needs to work. How can a diet that causes this to happen much more frequently, be healthy in any perspective whatsoever. You might say, well, short term, so I know it's not fine. It's not fine in the short term or medium term or long term, in any term. Think about what it means if a process is bringing yourself closer and closer to running out of ATP. It means that's, that's, the, that's our enemy. Like that's what we don't want to do. But what happens when when all these three stages complete. Well, on screen now, you should see uh, the first of the four steps that we're going to talk about. When we take away that phosphate and we go from fructose, uh, where we go from fructose to fructose 1-phosphate, like I said, that's rapid ATP use and there's no regulation. So that's the first sort of consequence, if you like. The second consequence, which should come up on screen now, is the triase kinase activity. Again, where we're just taking even more ATP to break off that phosphate and use it for glyceraldehyde, so glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, okay? Those are the first two. After that, then we have purine degradation. And this is basically where we go from adenosine monophosphate, where we've taken even more phosphate, we've taken not just from ATP to ADP, but, but then from ADP, diphosphate, to adenosine monophosphate, we've broken another one off. Essentially, the AMP, the adenosine monophosphate, through a load of intermediate steps, ends up as uric acid. And this entire process has even more ATP reduction, and obviously we have uric acid production, which by itself is not necessarily an issue, depending on the context. But in this context, like, it's, it's not good at all, because we're not designed, designed, I'm not a creationist, but we're not meant to have things that just deplete our ATP in this way. And the fourth problem is that you get to this, this chain, uh, which happens within the mitochondria called oxidative phosphorylation. This is the chain that ultimately kind of ends up with uh, chemiosmosis, where we can actually manufacture ATP. We take phosphate, we add it to ADP, then it's in diphosphate, squeeze them together, and then out the other end comes ATP. But this entire process, this oxidative phosphorylation process, it's completely impaired. Why? Because the phosphate is not available. It's sequestered. It's, it's, it's been used up trying to prevent fructose from causing loads of damage. And so we don't have enough phosphate left over to combine it with ADP to then make ATP and, and bring those levels back up. So the entire thing, the entire process here is destructive. There's nothing healthy about this at all. And it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're young or you're old, whether you're on this medication or that medication or not on any medication, whether it's for the short term, intermediate term, long term, there is no aspect of fructolysis that is healthy in any way whatsoever. It is only damaging. 
And here's the thing, right? Fructose is vestigial to human physiology. If you don't know what that means, you know, we, we have certain things which are essential for our bodies to actually work properly and optimally. For example, amino acids, right? We need amino acids. There are certain fatty acids that we, we can't make ourselves. So they are essential. Now, there's no essential carbohydrate, contrary to popular belief, um, because we can make whatever carbohydrate we need through a process called gluconeogenesis. Fructose is also a carbohydrate. It's not essential. Not only is it not essential, there is no process in the body that requires fructose in any way whatsoever for that process to complete or to function in any way whatsoever. Fructose is vestigial. I hope this has raised enough alarm bells and red flags to show you that, you know, if there's a swimming pool and there's a bit of poop in one end, even if it's in one end, I'm not getting in the other end, right? It's the whole swimming pool is now contaminated. And for me, the sugar diet, this aspect of the sugar diet, you know, all this bio biochemistry that I've done, it's not opinion. It's just a fact. Like, it's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. It's not anyone else's opinion. It's biochemistry. It's observable. It, can, you, it happens right in front of you. So it's not opinion. It is fact. And when this is fact, like, I would not trust any diet which requires this because it's not required in any way for human physiology. And for me, that's that's all I need. That one aspect on its own tells me that the entire thing doesn't hold up at all. I hope that's given you the same. Um, if you prefer different analogies, you know, comment down below, let me know. But I hope this has been educational and why I completely disagree with the sugar diet.